I'm Max, and this is a KMD Motorsport Interim Report. Today's category is Tips and Tricks. Now, if you're like me, you like to have your engine bay as clean and neat as possible. Mine isn't very clean and neat, but there are some things I can do to start getting it there. One of them is getting rid of the secondary air pump. Now, what is a secondary air pump and why do you need it? Well, a secondary air pump is a pump that pumps air into your exhaust on a cold start. It does this to try to combust any unburnt fuel and warm up your cats. Now, I don't have cats, so I wanna get rid of this. I already bought a block off plate for my new motor, but I don't wanna put that block off plate on here and then have to take it off and put it onto the new motor down the road. I also don't wanna buy another one, so, what I'm gonna do is make the valve inert in a way, take out the pump and take out some of the other components that go along with it. Now this system consists of three major parts, the valve, the pump, and another diverter valve that's on the back of the intake manifold. And I'll show you how to get rid of all of those things. All right, first up on the list is taking out the pump. Now this pump is connected to the valve through this big hose right here. Now you'll notice that I've pretty much already done this whole process, but I just wanted to put it somewhat back together to show you guys step-by-step step how to go about it. So first you gotta pull off the hose. There's gonna be a hose clamp on the side with the valve, and there's gonna be a hose clamp on the pump side. Take those off, or at least loosen them, and then you can pull the hose off of the valve. Now that that's off, we can take the pump out itself. You'll do this by loosening three bolts. This one here, this one here, and this one back here. So let's get to that. Now when you go to pull this out, you'll notice there's also an electrical connector at the bottom of the pump. So disconnect that and then you can pull it out. Great, now that we've got that out of the way, you can see there's actually a second bracket that we'll have to take care of. You can take it off by taking off this nut, this nut, and this nut down here. Great, now that we've got that off, the engine bay already looks a whole lot cleaner but there's a couple more things you want to do before you call it a job well done. Good. All right, so you'll probably notice that I've already got my sap valve plugged up on both sides, one here and one here, but you will probably have a vacuum line that goes from this port all the way back around your motor into a diverter valve on the back of the intake manifold. So, all you gotta do is disconnect it from this side and put on a cap. Then we'll go to the back of the intake manifold and take care of the rest of it from there. All right, so let's go take care of the valve on the back of the intake manifold. Now to get there, you're gonna need to take off your cabin air filter holder. Uh, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is pop up this clip this clip and this clip. Take that out, take out your filter, place those somewhere safe. Now you've got four bolts, one, two, three, four. Yours will probably all be Torx, but the previous owner couldn't find their fourth one, so they put an Allen in for mine. So let's get those out and uh, let's get moving. Put it somewhere nice and safe. Okay, great. So, there's a valve on the back of this intake manifold. And no matter how hard we try, we're not gonna be able to get a shot of it. So, I've got another intake manifold to show you what it looks like. All 
This is the intake manifold off of my new motor. It sits on the motor like this. And you'll see on the back of it, when I turn it around, it's got this diverter valve. I'm not sure the exact role the diverter valve plays. I believe it's just to give some kind of vacuum reference to let the pump know that the car is on. But basically, this electrical signal here tells the valve to either open or close, either divert vacuum or not, to the secondary air pump. So one of these ports, I don't remember which one, but one of them will route back to your intake manifold. The other one will route around to your uh, secondary air pump valve. You'll want to take both of those off, and then you'll want to cap whatever port the hose comes off of on your intake manifold, or you're gonna have a vacuum leak. Great, so I already have this vacuum line off. Uh, as you saw, it was already capped off on the secondary air pump valve, but now I'm just going to take the diverter valve out, and uh, I'll show you what that process looks like. What you're gonna want to do is pull it straight back, You might have to un, you know, push up, push back on this retaining clip here and push it straight back like that. Then it should come out just like that. You'll have your connector on there that you're gonna have to take out, but once it's out, you can zip tie it up somewhere and, uh, and now you don't have this pesky little thing sitting on the back of your intake manifold. So I'm gonna take mine off of this intake manifold now. All right, sticking my hand down into the pit. I've got a hold of the valve. All right, so I'm gonna pull back. There we go. Pull it out. And now I've got, after I disconnect the connector, my valve. Now I just let the connector go because it's pretty easy to get it back up to zip tie it. But here is the valve. That's going in the trash. I almost forgot. I need to zip tie up my connector that I just took off of the divert valve. So let me go grab that. Now I always like to keep a bag of zip ties in the glove box because you just never know when your bumper's gonna fall off or a wire's gonna come loose or anything. So it's nice to have zip ties. All right. Grab my connector. And I think I'm going to zip tie it to my brake booster hose. So take the zip tie, wrap it around. Oh, come on. And pull it tight. Now, since I'm a professional, I'm also gonna cut the zip tie. Or I should say, trim the zip tie. Ow! Uh, where are the clippers? Nipper, it should be nippers right on the wall in front of you. There'd be some side cutters right on the wall in front of you. Oh, you want the light ones? Yeah, uh, oh, here, this is fine. Yep. quite tight enough at all, so tighten it some more. Oh. Alright, so now that I've taken all that off, my car is going to throw a check engine light. My car actually won't because I've already done the uh, ECU overwrite to make sure that it does not check for emissions related faults, but if you are doing this, you are going to need to rewrite your ECU if you don't want your check engine light. I can make an episode all about that, but there's plenty of resources out there to show you exactly how to do it. And that is a job well done. All right, so if you live somewhere where they have a bit stricter of emission standards, you might wanna just look into what they require. We're not responsible for any penalties or uh, repercussions that you see, so 
keep that in mind. But overall, I think this gives the engine bay a bit cleaner of a look. You've got more room to work whenever you want to do something and you have less sources of vacuum leaks. So overall, I think it will help your car be a better car. I think that was pretty good. Okay. This is the intake manifold off of my new motor. What part it plays 